Welcome to Hanging Out with Robert, that's me. This video contains things that I tinker with throughout the day. For step-by-step -step detailed instructions of those tasks, you can click on the link in the comment section below. I plan on leaving this video accessible for about 30 days. After that, you can view it through my Patreon account. This video also has tips and tricks that I've learned over the years. So, thank you very much for watching. The old red baron back. Go get some gas and get a windshield put in here. Pulled off those jacked up trim. I'm going to pull this wiper and cowl and stuff off so they don't have to mess with it. And yeah, because I'm going to clean this up real good and take this thing over to the windshield place. Got the trim removed, the window cowl removed, up and running. Hey, we even got a cabin air filter. Mm -mm, yummy. Got to replace that. Let's go get this windshield replaced. On my way to the junkyard. First, I got to ship off some packages. I got four packages to ship out. Stop and drop those off. And at the junkyard, I'm going to finalize my cam alignment tool uh, set up. I think I'm done with it. Been much easier to buy the one from IPD. Somehow I got caught up in making my own. But anyway, I'll be done with that today. Tweak the timing on Panther and Queen Bee. And be done with that. Because I'm setting the NA cams properly. I got them close, but it's better to be correct than close. Here comes another Volvo. This one's just a V70. 98 model. Looks like it got hit really good in the front. Stuff out there laying on the ground. I uh, can't tell if it's a standard or auto. But it's got a dark interior so it should have some decent parts in it. A few other things. Let me go do what I need to do. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and check my tool on this 98 cross country. It's already got the cam sensor off the back. I just need to pull the distributor and the timing belt cover. Set the timing right. Put my locking tools on there. So, let me get cracking. Looks like somebody made their own marks. Nice thing is, this thing has a Volvo water pump. Timing belt still intact, tensioner set right on the money. Somebody made their own mark, so I assume that they uh, replaced cam seals. Here's actual timing mark there. So I'm going to go ahead and align the timing. And put the tool on the back. And check my tool that I made. I want to share a little lesson I learned with you guys about timing. Now these newer fuel injector cars, fuel injection cars, when I say newer, I mean cars 1990-ish and newer, or cars with fuel injection, uh, just wanted to kind of bring you up to date, you know, as old guys. Anyway, these cars have a computer, and the computer controls the idle. You don't have settings to adjust the idle. If you're adjusting something to adjust the idle, something's wrong. So the computer knows, hey, the idle's supposed to be 800, 900 RPMs. It uh, uses the computer and the mass airflow sensor and the fuel pressure and injectors to maintain that at idle. When you take off, your gas pedal controls the RPM range along with the computer. The computer is mixing fuel and air. Uh, as you move your foot on the pedal even in these newer combustion cars and I want to talk to you about how the cars with locked uh, timing uh, cars that are not variable timing how the computer uh, advances and retards timing that was something that I didn't understand and I had a mechanic explain it to me recently my car is a 95, this car is a 98. This is the last Volvo with a cap and rotor. This is the cap, this is the rotor. It's got spark plugs that leads to the uh, individual uh, cylinders. 
and these wires connect to the cap in a specific order to help the car fire properly. Every car has a firing order. One, three, four, two, five, something like that. That's not it, but cars have a firing order. Then you have the ignition coil. The ignition coil on these, now I'm going to say older cars, uh, the computer tells it when to spark. The spark shoots through this wire, the coil wire, which is laying here. The coil wire sends this spark through the center. The center picks up this spark through your rotor and discharges that spark out of the tip of the rotor according to what spark plug it's at or which one of these tips in here it's at. So that's how the spark works. So you got a car sitting here it's going a thousand RPMs that RPM is normally crank RPMs which half of that is rotor RPMs because the crank turns twice the, the cam turns once. Now if you're at 2000 RPMs it's firing each one of those cylinders a thousand times a minute. So if you're cruising at 3000 RPMs it's firing each spark plug 1500 times. 1500 times 5 well you get uh, 3, 6, 7,500 times this coil will be told to discharge from the computer. So if you're cruising down the highway at 75 or 80, this thing discharges 7,500 sparks a minute. That's a whole lot. So your newer cars that don't have a, a coil here, they have a coil over each spark plug they have the job of discharging that spark only to that spark plug. So that reduces the duty cycle of the coil because you got five individual coils instead of one coil servicing five plugs. That's an advantage uh, of the coil not wearing. Also, the coil is uh, dealing with only one plug. So you got a situation where it's not going to wear out as fast. Now, I want to talk to you about the timing. You're driving along and the engine is idle. Let's say it's set at no advance, no retard. Now, as the, you push on the gas, you may be advancing the timing, especially if you're getting in your higher RPMs and you're aggressive. So, if it's advancing that uh, timing, it may need to send a spark a little bit sooner. If you're cruising down the road and you don't have your foot on your gas because you're going down the hill, it may need to retard that timing a little bit. How that timing is advanced and retard is this. As this rotor is turning inside the cap and the computer is telling it to spark, these sparks, these sparks are sharp, crisp sparks. So, Let's say you're no advance, no retard. That spark is going to be letting off its spark right in the middle of this road. So your spark is going to be discharging, let's say here. As you put a load on the engine and you're timing in advance, it's going to tell that coil to spark a little sooner. So instead of that thing sparking here, it may be discharging its spark over here or a little bit over here. And if you're cruising down the road with your foot off the gas and your timing is retard, the computer is telling the spark plug, since the engine doesn't have any load on it, to spark later. So it's sparking on this side of this rotor. So you got an area in here that the timing is adjusted. It just don't spark during this whole time against those pins in there it fires a certain time while it's crossing that pin it may be sparking here it may be sparking here it may be sparking here so if you have a situation where your vehicle is let's say knocking that means the spark is not happening 
soon enough or your combustion is not happening soon enough so the computer should be trying to advance the timing the timing of when that spark is discharged if it can't adjust it enough you'll experience knock which means uh, your piston is still coming up while this is discharging its explosion and if that explosion happens before that piston crosses its top dead center position it'll create knock you don't want knock knock can destroy your engine crack a cylinder wall or something like that so if you have a ignition problem where your car is knocking or the timing is not advancing or retarding uh, properly you could have a bad rotor bad uh, cap or your timing setting could be off but how your computer adjusts your timing it adjusts when that spark happens along the bridge of this uh, rotor hope that helps thanks for watching I wanted to share with you guys a common problem that people have with a crank no start condition when somebody replaces a cylinder head or installs the cam locking tools on the car when they're doing timing and the most common problem of that issue is they don't put this ring on right this ring is offset it has grooves let me get it out of here and show you but if you don't put that ring back in there properly uh, your firing order won't be proper boy this thing is stuck in here alright if you see the back of the cams it has a slot in it one of those slots is offset in the exhaust cam when the timing is set properly the slot is offset down that ring that goes in there it has this little groove in it if you look at it dead on you'll notice that groove is offset down what people do is they put that in improper tighten it down and then your cam sensor can't work so you want to be careful you don't do that take a look at this the groove is offset down a little bit let me get the light on there see if that helps so grooves all set down you put this in there if you put it in gently and spin it around it'll fall in place when it gets proper but when it's off it may hesitate but it's not falling all the way in place like right there it caught but it's not in place as you can see the holes are not lined up so you want to keep turning this thing until it is lined up properly or just look at it and get it close and then put it in when it falls in place properly then you tighten the screw down you won't have an issue with your cam sensor being off now it is proper lined up with the slot you can put the screw in there tighten it down car should fire right out i tell people to check that half moon ring all the time and they don't and as you can see the half moon ring is pointing around four o'clock the top part is open the bottom part has the flat disc on it that's how it should be cam locking tools installed engine is in synchronization as far as the cams go and now I got all these bolts loose so I'm going to see where my tool ends up on here set my tools make sure they're good if you have the IPD tool which is man a great price now you align your cams you want to put your uh, crank on its mark then you come up here you put the tool on here you loosen these bolts the belt's going to hold the sprocket in place don't worry about that you put the tool in place you put your bolts in uh, not even tight almost to where they're tight 
Then you get a long screwdriver. You put it in between a couple of your screw heads. Okay. Your screw heads are in there like that. And you get you a uh, screwdriver or a wrench of some sort. Dang it, let me get this in here so I can show you. The bolts are not tight. Get you something in here, like a screwdriver or something. And you turn your cam until your alignment is where you want it on the tool. Oh, I got the locking tool in the back. If I didn't have a locking tool in the back, you'd see it move. Let me go pull the locking tool. So you have your IPD disc in place. It has a line going over there. If you want to retard, you turn it this way. This cam will retard. You may see it move. If you want to advance, you go this way. You go advance clockwise as it is advanced and you'll see that tool move the sprocket and timing is still the same so if you change your belt none of that changes but this will make the cam advanced to retard see it has a slot in there so you can adjust the timing a little bit now this cover up here it has a zero a ten a zero ten twenty thirty these are not 10 degrees. These are uh, 10 is 5 degrees, 20 is 10 degrees, 30 is 15 degrees. So don't think those are actually 10 degrees. They're actually uh, 5 degrees each notch. So I have my little homemade tool here. What I do, I'm going to take the uh, front cover off. I'm going to line this up at zero. I'm going to put a mark over the exhaust cam. Zero is going to be my intake cam. That mark's going to be my exhaust cam. Then I'm going to pull the top two screws out. Snug this against there. Loosen that one. Then I'm going to go over to the other side. The lower marks on there, if you can see them, is for the intake cam. The upper marks are for the exhaust cam. And I'll be able to retard or advance. Each notch is a degree. Second transmission drop and refill on the Blue Beast. That stuff is still looking nasty. Little red tint to it. Put it in there. Take it to auto parts store. Three, just over three liters, almost three and a half quarts came out. This vehicle here had oil puddling up here. Somebody told us the cam seal leak. Well, cam seals don't leak up, they leak down. Oil cap had a busted up seal broke in three places and you can see all the oil in here you know this is you know kind of normal 850 stuff you gotta take this thing off clean these things out every once in a while every five ten thousand miles or so but don't let it scare you just make sure you got a good cap seal you see all the oil built up under there clean this stuff out every once in a while so it don't foul out your spark plugs and if you have aftermarket wires like this do not try to pull these out unless you got some replacement wires because they usually break when you try to pull them out. So only try to pull out the Volvo wires. Setting the timing on Panther. This took 20 minutes by the way. And I didn't have the crank on the mark. I was adjusting the timing. I said, man, something's off. So I got the crank on the mark, set the timing. I think the exhaust was two degrees off and I'm not sure about the intake, but it's set right now. I'm going to do a pull tomorrow, see if I get any knock. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.